is really is what we call a pure land, you know, so really Himalaya is really very rich history, very rich cultures. <laughs> This sacred landscape is part of the lost kingdom of Zhang Zhong. like 10th century. The mountains is to passing is not easy. It's very deep, very high. Really remote area, Dolpo is. But Dolpo has high practitioner. Throughout the history, it has been very important place for Bern. Great Bern practitioners, uh, great masters lived in Dolpo area. These Himalayan regions, including Tibet, belong to an ancient kingdom known as Zhang Zhong. They practice Bon religion, which the Dalai Lama has said is Tibet's oldest spiritual tradition, existing thousands of years before Buddhism. Burn is a very ancient religion. In fact, I would say this is one of the oldest living uh, religious tradition in the world. At least over 9,000 years ago, the founder of Burn religion, Buddha Dhammashira, lived. So according to our historical account, Tolpo had been part of the Shangshun. Zhangzhong covered a vast area ruled by kings and priests for centuries. By the 7th century, with the introduction of Buddhism, Bon and Bonpo practitioners were persecuted. But Bon practices remain hidden among the mountains of Dolpo. Religion very old, very old. Maybe older than Tibet. The beginning. Uh, taxi, come from uh, uh, taxi to Shangzhou, Shangzhou to Tibet. Many years later, then Dolpo is, becomes uh, part of Nepal. Today, the Shangzhong language is extinct in most of the world, but still spoken in parts of Dolpo. It is the key to uncovering Bon history, as well as preserving Bon and Tibetan culture. All this Himalayan region is Xiangshun area. We don't know that when it starts, Xiangshun kingdom. Still, we, have, we are using many words of Xiangshun language. But Dolpo is still exist, and there's so many uh, people speaking still Xiangshun language. As uh, we call the uh, Takali, those speaking uh, still Xiangshun speaking. The local uh, language is very special. There's so many Xiangshun languages still we can find. Scholars are still uncovering where and when the Xiangshong kingdom began. Xiangshong language and texts are crucial to the survival of Bon. Dolpo is a rare place on earth where original Bon texts can still be found following the Chinese invasion of Tibet. In the years after the Chinese intrusion of Tibet in 1959, China destroyed many ancient Xiangzhong artifacts along with Buddhist and Bon monasteries, stupas, temples, and valuable texts. After uh, 1959's uh, revelation in Tibet, all Bonbo teaching texts come from the Dolpo. Dolpo is nowadays part of Nepal, so that's the uh, Chinese uh, government cannot control uh, very much uh, their culture and Nepal government very far from the uh, Dolpo so that's why they cannot kind of reach you know difficult to reach there because Dolpo is a very high place that's why um, you know still 
we are having our traditional food and try, try to wearing traditional clothes so and practice uh, religious you know spiritual and chant Shamans, known as Dhammis, native to the Nepalese Himalayan region, evoke spirits that talk through them in trance. Contrary to some myths, these Dhammis are not bon practitioners. The Dalai Lama has spoken many times of the importance of Bon religion and how we must preserve Bon culture and history. Bonpa means it has to be remote, a very quiet place. Because uh, in the early time, people has to retreat, practice religious uh, ritual and different texts in the caves. Shangzhong was mainly uh, for nomad. Not much traces you can't see now. Only for the ruins of castles, at most of the people live in the caves. Still, you could see the trace of smoke on very high caves. We, we found uh, many caves uh, in, in some in Tara. Zambling Monastery houses over 600 volumes of ancient texts and is where many high lamas have come to access ancient teachings. Not only the Chaitanya Lama lineage in this monastery, many of the lineage lama has the resident in this monastery. Samling is the very important monastery in Dolpo, especially in Bonn. So because of the, you know, many Dzogchen master, uh, they practice there. The Bonn philosophical study of Dzogchen, the great perfection, focuses on the nature of mind and is identified with the bodhicitta, or natural state. Especially Shangsheng, we have the uh, very uh, highest text we call the Shangsheng Yanju. We have around uh, maybe 600 volume of books which you don't find in Tibet. These books are which is like uh, written by the disciples of Buddha. So. Uh, we, we contain this kind of volume of books, very old ones. Like Dolpo Charka, Samling, um, um, uh, like Berlin, Dotara, this is, those, they have, we have small monastery, very rich uh, text, library. Riwo Buddhist Monastery and Shipchok Bon Monastery in Do Tarap are places where Bon and Buddhism are practiced together. His name is Chichap uh, Tsewang. Chichap Tsewang, and he built this Dutpa. Every year we have puja, we do Buddhism and Bon in the same temple. 
So I could say we have good relationship with uh, Bon and Buddhism in the in that one of the I think um, kind of unique. Bombo Tantric uh, petitioner this this seat this line and Buddhism uh, lives, can sit on uh, other side. Most of people are born. While Buddhism and Bon have similarities, Buddhism came from the south and Bon came from the north. Indian Buddhists are very different than Bon. The Indian Buddhist monk dress well, well, just this, very peaceful, praying, chanting, meditate, just this. No tantric, no sokchen, no something like this activity. No mass dance, different lineage, teaching lineage, different deities, different Buddhas, different protectors, different mantra, different rituals, you know, all this uh, is uh, not the same. In Indian, there's only one Buddha. In the Bombo, we have thousand Buddha. And they are not completely different. Our purpose, aims, goal is the same, to become enlightenment, to generate compassion and bodhicitta, you know? So Indu means swastika. So swastika has the many religious, it, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, and uh, many religious kind of, you know, so, but very common in Bonn. Many of Westerners they didn't like it. <laughs> they had been, don't like it, the uh, swastika very much. Italy, he has got, he had got the kind of idea during the war time, he had like signs. Then he put that, that sign, uh, swastika. Then this is not uh, Bonn's, Bonn way, it's the Buddhism way. But uh, he, didn't, he didn't talk about the Buddhism. Just he got ideas, he put swastika. In ancient times, the swastika symbol usually meant eternal energy or life is good, and was important to both Bon and Buddhist practices many centuries before World War II. This ancient Bon stupa, called Yongjong Kalsang Wobar, was built by Treton Namkai Gyaltsen, an 11th century Bon master. The current Yangton lineage holder, Geshe Yangton Yontin Pasang, has initiated a restoration project for this important stupa. They already started. Now they're doing uh, under the construction. If the st uh, stupa finish, then we will unite, unitely uh, to, together all Bombo villages, lamas together. We will try to do uh, medicine puja. Tools and hardware are still hand-forged, including nails for repairing the stupa. So 
this this kind of pillar is uh, uh, central of the stupa because we have human body has the kind of china in the kind of to breathe you know when we breathe is calm and down so it's central so that's why we put kind of this uh, in the central This text about the explanation mind and to kind of uh, to uh, talk about a negative emotion to uh, uh, kind of clear negative emotion and to receive the positive uh, thought. Originally Tibetan uh, handmade paper. Very thick. Very thick. Ancient Shangzhong texts were made out of durable natural materials and coated with layers of a type of homemade starch. We have in Dolpo kind of monsoon. So that time many rain. So some people and try to put many tags inside the stupa, statues. Because if it's kind of safely, then it's still there and we found it. Yeah, this is parameter yeah, text. Very old. Don't they don't know Pony, you know, double, Melon, double, Shillen, and the Bowden. Don't they don't know Pony, Namka, Hot, and the Dandan, the Pony, the Bow? No, so so to be shed, and never need to shed, and don't want to shed. Five is strong. Pony means empty. Look at that, his hand there. Yeah, I found some text, but it's almost damaged. And difficult to uh, difficult to read. Oh, the bomber on it. Ah, bomber. Pony Namka. Come to this is bone text because Pony is bone. Some bone is emptiness. Yeah, bone. Bone emptiness. Namka. Namka. Yes, yeah. 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 So this you, this sign you can see that it's a very old language in early 8th, 9th century. So many feather inside. Then I look at then I found one piece of paper. Then and I try to more. <laughs> we found many things. Good. good yeah, that's good. Yeah. Bone. Bunny. Yeah. This too. Bon. Bunny, bunny. So 
that's where we can actually we show this is bone text and also this stupa is bone stupa i'm very happy because i didn't thought i didn't think about to find this sort of text in this uh, stupas because it's people can go easily inside the stupa so if if, uh, if they're found they can check easily i didn't think about inside the some text so it was for us very fortunate yeah you talk me you we using early shangshung time me yeah so yeah you talk me later on ยินน่ะจิงบ่าเป็ดซ่องเนี่ยจิกๆไล่ดูขาเรียนชิชิ <laughs> 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 Nowadays, it's quite difficult to uh, save our old tags. So it's very good to write to down some dictionary. And I wrote ancient burn words. Now I almost finished almost uh, 5,000 pages. It's very important, not only for burn, in Tibetan cultures, Tibetan history. Practices and rituals that vanished from the rest of the world are still alive in Dolpo. Dolbo is still pure. This dress is the same. And this really is very important in the history. A ritual fire puja symbolically chases away demons and activates positive karmic potentials. Part of this ceremony includes connecting everyone with a string. When the ritualist cuts the string, it releases the earthly attachments for all participants. Saving environment in our uh, land. So when we do construction before we build, we have to uh, permit uh, the uh, earth god. I went to the mountains. Really, really powerful. I uh, sit there. Oh, just uh, automatically, my feels really something like changing. Oh, I'm, I, oh, I love it, meditation from the, this uh, element. It's, it's really connecting and like arising, a really secret power, energy from the earth, from the, this uh, element. Oh, 
on the prayer flags has the significance of the five elements. Blue is the water. Yellow is the instead of the earth. Red is the instead of the fire. Green is the instead of the wind. Why is the kind of space instead of space? It has to balance it. Somebody has the kind of uh, fire problem. So they have to put more red colors uh, prayer flags. And somebody problem with the water. So they have to put more the like, blue prayer flags. So this sort of, you know, it depends on person. People who live here for century and century, just because they live naturally, natural elements, they live together. Here is balance so people can live. Our uh, kind of blood is connected with the uh, water. And body kind of, yes, body skin, human skin is connected with the earth. And bone is connected with the, uh, like raw or stone. Then uh, inside of the car, uh, uh, breathe, you know, when we breathe, it's connected outside of the wind. And inside of we have space, body, in inner space, kind of, you know, this is connected with the spy uh, outside of space. So this sort of connected. When you are putting, try to put prayer flags, you, you have to wish to remove the, your problem to uh, your dreams come true, to wish. Usually people try to put on the top of the lake or top of the mountains because of the very uh, clean winds. The winds come very easily, you know, winds push the prayer flags. Uh, their kind of karma is go up. Similar to prayer flags, water prayer wheels is kind of small house and the water comes up and there is kind of small pipe and water push the wheels and then barley goes in the uh, stone then it makes a uh, sampa. Sampa is the barley has to dry and then fry then it makes like powder. So Sampa is very traditional food in Tibet and Himalaya range. Part of the Dolpo Bon practice includes pilgrimages to and around sacred places where koras or circumambulations are performed. Kora means to uh, clean negative thought like desire, anger, to clean. Bonpos often make pilgrimages around Mount Kailash in Tibet. It is very difficult terrain, and some pilgrims die each year of altitude sickness. But it is the desire of a lifetime to journey around the sacred peak. Considered a brother to Mount Kailash, Dolpo's Crystal Mountain is located near Shea Monastery. As Dolpo's most sacred peak, many perform koras each year during the full moon and before the yearly grain harvest, among other auspicious times. When we do pilgrimage, village to village, very far. Villages in Dolpo are accessible and linked by walking via animal trails. It can take one to five days to reach the next village. Yak and mule trains carry lumber, stone, salt, and barley once a year from village to village. I, I... This local trade system has been crucial for survival. Somebody people are carrying wood, uh, somebody people are carrying stone. It's a mountain trail. That's time we have uh, difficult to walk. Agriculture is very limited in high Himalayan areas. The local people make only three kinds of agriculture. Only uh, buckwheat, potatoes, yeah. and wheat. They could not make more uh, because this is mountain area. 
Because funding for needed supplies is limited, not every village has a medical clinic. But there are small clinics sparsely scattered throughout Dolbo. Most clinics combine traditional practices with Western medicine. Traditional Tibetan medicine is based on balancing one's internal elements within the body with the five elements outside in nature. This is the medicine Buddha. I work in the hospital as a staff nurse. So this hospital, after uh, now, is running on its fifth year. I have special training, uh, which is of two months, uh, regarding uh, deliveries, uh, maternal and neonatal. My mother, she passed away because of that, because after the like delivery of my brother, who was of, after four months, she passed away because of postpartum hemorrhage. So I uh, like it's my aim to become a midwife. Many children die, die due to just simple diseases, common cold, diarrhea. These are due to because they they don't maintain good sanitation. And in adult case, most of them we have a COPD case, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. I think this is due to they uh, yeah they cook in the close close place, so they don't have proper. Uh, there's no good chimney. So I think because of that, it affects all the smoke they take in. Each year we have a mortality of uh, 15 to 16 children. We have approximately 700 something population, and so a two bed is not sufficient for the patients sometimes. So patients lie on the ground. We don't have sufficient electricity, so I think solar power is very important here. But it's very difficult. This is the special delivery bed, which is made by the local people. People, they are unaware of going to the hospitals. And so we deliver at home. Geshe Sherab Nima is an Amchi, or Tibetan medicine doctor, who serves the local people at the Gangchen Menkong Center in Chunuwar near Ringmo. As an Amchi doctor, he does religious puja ceremonies for his patients as well as preparing plant and natural medicines. I he said uh, outside of the uh, elements and inner element not balance it, then uh, people can get ill. He said the uh, Tibetan medicine it comes from the Buddha Dumba Shirab's uh, student Chebu Chishe. He's the uh, kind of uh, one of the most important doctor during that time. The yeah, medicine text we call the Bumji. There is kind of four chapters. Uh, was early time in Xiangxiang language. Then after like uh, translate in Tibetan language. So that's where uh, Tibetan medicine come from Xiangxiang. Yeah, some uh, medicines come from the nearby riverside they brought, and sometimes where the heavy like windy area. So they have to collect, and sometimes we are the warm area, you know, you know, you know which means connected with the elements, so very important in Tibetan medicine is. So it's connected, yeah, Ayurveda and Chinese medicine and Tibetan medicine, and Western medicine, every connected. But you know, people are making different way. Some Western medics have assisted clinics in the Dolpo area since they have been open to ways of combining Western and Eastern techniques and treatment. Quigley Peterson is a U.S. family and emergency medical doctor in practice for over 30 years. This is a very, very good medicine for bleeding. Here's lidocaine. This is saline for mixing with antibiotics. Very strong medicine for Pneumonia. These are all materials from posing. So, see, so this is antibiotics. The gold. Right. Ampicillin, right? Yes. And we have a same. Do you have a microscope? 
to look? No. No, no. So that means they're diagnosing things here just based on history and basic physical. It was so inspiring to see how much they do with so little basic stuff. You have to kind of deductively figure it out. And you know, you can make a really good educated guess most of the time. Yeah. And so I'm also inspired by that because it makes you wonder what are we doing with all these CAT scans and blood tests and you know whatnot on chronic illness. My father he's going to uh, to get medicine hospital because he has problem here. So he's going to um, uh, hospital clinic. So I would like to say take care himself and I hope my brothers and his wife and my two of brother will be look after him. So I would like to say take care. Yeah, yeah. 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 Traditionally once a year in Dolpo, people travel to a special place like Ringmo for the Mendrup ceremonies. During 10 days of elaborate ceremonies and prayers, Bon specialists prepare natural medicine pills from plants for the health and well-being of all Bonpos. The Menri Lopon recently constructed a hospital in Dolpo in his home village of Sharka. I built a hospital in Dolpo, Sharka. Uh, Tibetan medicine and also Western medicine, both. There's a small village and this is a big problem. This is really the um, to dying with, by the pregnant. So that's, that's why say, I built this hospital. So I hope really is uh, going to help for the local people's human body is very precious. It's not easy to, to burn in this human being. So that's why we have to really take care. Just pray, just pray, meditation is not enough. You know, maybe enough some really great practitioner. The local people, the ordinary people so couldn't help. So this is to build some hospital. This is my practice, my meditations. Dolpo places high value in bone practice and education. Yeah, education is very important, not only in Dolpo, around the world. How to do ritual and how to learn Ayurvedic medicine, this sort of many things. Tapriza School is the largest school in Dolpo. Tapriza School is the best school in Dolpo. At the beginning, the local people requested to them uh, to establish a school here. Parents in Ringmo wanted to preserve their traditions and pass them on to their children. So they joined forces with anthropologist Marietta Kind and conservationist Catherine Inman to advocate for their own school. We have uh, 230 students. We teach them uh, born meditations in the morning and the evening. Then the subjects we have teach like the math and science, social and singing, dancing, everything. Each children have to pay 1,200 for the stationery. And they have to bring the 10 kg rice. Then the school provide everything, like the books, pen, pencil, and sanitation, a school uniform to uh, cook food for the children and to wash the clothes. Supplies such as notebooks are in high demand, but since they are heavy to transport, they may take several months to arrive at the school. His job is that to teach uh, born religious and uh, how to meditate, this sort of. So that's really important. Geshe Nima Kunjab is starting a school in Dune. It's really nice, and also studying some own cultures and this tradition, keeping. It's really good. Geshe Nima, he worked very hard uh, for this uh, area. Most of the children are from our village, and some are very far from here. This is very special school for children to learn uh, ritual and ritual ceremony. ceremony. In Torbo, most of the um, 
custom is um, tantric. Tantric, yeah. special, yeah, meditation, practice of de different deities. Yeah, very, very important for uh, Dolbo Bon. But not every school succeeds, and many towns do not have educational facilities. Charka, our school is now recently closed. Ceiling of fall, one uh, classroom, and also now there is no pay, uh, no, no money for the teacher. This is not good. This is very sad. Some bone practitioners now teach in the West. Most monks train for the advanced degree of Bon Geshe at either Menri Monastery or Tritin Norbutse Monastery, taking about 13 years to achieve this advanced degree, similar to a PhD. Tritin Norbutse Bon Monastery in Kathmandu was founded by His Eminence Yongzin Lopon Tenzin Namdak, the most senior teacher and Bon lineage holder. He helped found the Menri Monastery in Dolanji, northern India, with His Holiness Lung Tok Tenpe Nima, the 33rd Menri Trinzin, the spiritual leader of Bon. Kenpo Tempa Yongjong Rinpoche now provides important Bon leadership as the abbot of Tritin Norbutse Monastery. His eminence, Menri Lopon Trinli Nima Rinpoche from Dolpo, was named the head teacher of all teachers at Menri Monastery in 1992. So always I'm giving teaching through the text. Uh, this, is, this is really important. Otherwise, uh, you know, so this really uh, energy, power, maybe this is really blessed. This ancient bla uh, energy is going to lose. In the early time, everything is there by their hand. People had food and clothes, everything made by themselves. They have had organic food only. So that's the people live for longer here. But uh, nowadays, uh, many things, clothes, food, and even though some waters, kind of drinks, they brought some from uh, Tibet or some from Kathmandu in India brought here so that's where uh, it has many kind of chemical so that's the people has getting many illness or you know this sort of problem where there was once salt as the main trading currency dolpo is now adapting to the nepalese cash system <laughs> He said that was not financially important. They have confidence and inside they have kind of power and like that's where they built struggle. Of things they did a lot of things. Nowadays not not confident. They need only financial support to uh, build monastery and stupa and statues. There is now much pressure from China to build roads from China into Dolpo and onward into India. The road is coming from China. They are almost reaching this one, looks like, uh, from China. So this is really also then going to destroy the environment. As any part of the world changes and transforms in the modernity, and then they lose a lot of their traditional values, traditional you know, system, and wonderful rivers and landscapes would not remain as it used to be. They might lose a lot of traditional taste and traditional values, but at the same time, they can be more accessible to other parts of the world, and uh, particularly this health. So I think that part would, be, uh, would in improve, but then at the same time, many things are losing. This is happening right now. They start changing. It's changing very quickly. So in the past, nobody knows. Now people are knowing. Then we call it the secret. But nobody can keep this secret.
if they bring rot and kind of many uh, chemical food and like uh, then it's really uh, kind of uh, effect for the like, uh, natural environment and then people don't uh, farm you know and then don't try to save uh, their own yards just you know try to ignore uh, i think this is not good we have to save It may be as soon as the next generation when Dolpo becomes fully engaged in the modern world. It is possible that much of the younger generation may lose interest in ancient techniques. Younger generation people feel very kind of discouraged to stay and there, you know, because they are very isolated. So it may, it may not remain as it is. It's really difficult to live in the future life. So that's where I think try to eat organic food, try to uh, wear on homemade clothes. That's really important. And also in the early culture, to, you know, it's difficult to say next general generation. Passing on the teachings, texts, and rituals to the youth are critical keys in preserving Bon culture and practices. The ancient Zhangzheng language and memory is still alive in Dolpo, revealing a story and rich history which are embedded in this sacred landscape, a story which must not be forgotten. We can't say how will it be for the future, the people, how they change it. But present time is now we are able to uh, preserve and start to put our own way.